Secondary hypertension is the topic for this video. I'm going to talk about uh, this um, condition and then I'm going to, at the end of the video, present some clinical vignettes for you. Okay, so secondary hypertension accounts for 5% of all the cases of hypertension or high blood pressure. And 95% of the cases of high blood pressure are essential, but 5% uh, have a secondary cause. So let's just keep uh, moving forward here. And before I do, I'm going to draw a diagram of the adrenal gland because a lot of what we talk about has to do with the adrenal gland. I'm going to, this is a cross section as if, uh, if I had taken the adrenal gland and sliced it in half. And I'm going to label each uh, part here and then I'm going to tell you what each part releases. So the outermost layer is known as the zona glomerulosa. Okay. The next part here is known as the zona fasciculata and then the next part here is the zona reticularis and these three together comprise an area known as the adrenal cortex. The final most inner portion, middle, is called the adrenal medulla. I sort of remember it as M for middle, M for medulla. Now what does each part of these uh, sections of the adrenal gland secrete? Well they secrete hormones and I'll tell you which ones. Zona glomerulosa secretes aldosterone. Zona fasciculata secretes cortisol. Zona reticularis, we're not going to talk about, but uh, I'm going to just tell you that, that it secretes androgens. Adrenal medulla, definitely we're going to talk about, and it secretes epinephrine and norepinephrine. Okay, so I needed to, I needed to tell you that before I move on with the conditions. And I'm not usually big on mnemonics, but I like this one. It uh, kind of talks about the different causes of secondary hypertension. So you have Cushing's disease, you have hyperaldosteronism, you have hyperparathyroidism. Um, then the next one is aortic coarctation, and then pheochromocytoma. And then finally, stenosis of the renal artery. We're going to talk about each one. And CHAPS. You can remember that if you'd like. Okay, here we go. So Cushing's disease, the first one. Cushing's disease. Cushing's. So what is it? Well, Cushing's disease is a tumor in the pituitary gland. And the two tumor produces a lot of ACTH which is a hormone normally produced by the pituitary. The ACTH causes, what does ACTH do? It's a hormone. What does it do? Well it acts to stimulate that adrenal gland that we just talked about to produce what? Cortisol. Now how does cortisol increase blood pressure? Cortisol, what it does is it increases the sensitivity of the vasculature, the blood vessels of the vasculature, to epinephrine and norepinephrine. Now these hormones act on the blood vessels to do what? They cause vasoconstriction. Vasoconstriction. And the vasoconstriction of a blood vessel directly leads to increased blood pressure. Vasoconstriction, by definition, is when you decrease the diameter of the uh, of the artery. So instead of the diameter being uh, that size, the diameter would now be this size. Okay. The next one we have is hyperaldosteronism. Now, as the name implies, you have a lot of aldosterone. Now, what is aldosterone and where does it come from? Well, you remember it comes from the adrenal gland. It comes from the zona glomerulosa. And what does aldosterone do? Well, it works on the kidney. And this is the nephron of the kidney. There's about a million of these in the kidney. And the nephron has a segment over here called the distal convoluted tubule. And this is the part that aldosterone works on. It works by bringing back sodium and water. 
into the bloodstream. This is a blood vessel I just drew. And when you bring back a lot of water and sodium into the bloodstream, you increase blood pressure. Okay. Next one is called hyperparathyroid. Hyperparathyroidism. And hyperparathyroidism, as the name implies, is when the parathyroid gland increases a lot of parathyroid hormone. Parathyroid hormone uh, is in the is something secreted by the parathyroid gland. Those glands are um, in your neck near your thyroid. And what does parathyroid do? It increases something in the blood stream. Do you remember what? Calcium. Now, how does that eventually lead to increase in blood pressure? Well, calcium results in more contraction of the vascular smooth muscle. Okay? The wall of the blood vessel has this vascular smooth muscle. And when you contract it, the diameter decreases. Okay? So the blood vessel now looks like this. It's narrower. That essentially is vasoconstriction vasoconstriction when you constrict a blood vessel that means the blood pressure inside increases next one is aortic coarctation now before I uh, talk about this I'm gonna have to draw a diagram and I'm gonna need about as much space as I can get so what I'm going to do is I'm gonna draw a body here uh, let's see well, th these are the arms here yeah. and then I'm going to draw a heart and then I'm going to draw the aorta coming out of the heart and draw the branches and then I'm going to make this narrowing very obvious and then okay and then the branches of the aorta, one goes to the arm here, one goes up to the neck, uh, one goes over here to the other arm. This is the heart. This is the aorta. And the blood is coming out this way. This, these, this arrow is the direction of the blood. Okay? All right. So this right here is representing the narrowing or the coarctation this arrow right here now what what effect does this have if there is indeed a, a narrowing or coarctation in this aorta well what it does is it forces the heart to pump harder much harder to get blood through the aorta into the rest of the body and as a result the pressure in this area that I'm drawing lines in will be much higher and it will be also higher in any branch that happens before the coarctation. Once the blood passes through the coarctation, it can, you know, the, the pressure drops down to, it can be normal. So think about what's happening when you take the blood pressure in, let's say, an arm, it will be high. And then later on, if you took it in the lower extremity, it will be lower. So that's coarctation of the aorta. The next one is pheochromocytoma. Chromocytoma. This is tested so often. Uh, this is essentially a tumor in the adrenal gland, in particular the adrenal medulla. And if you remember, the adrenal medulla secretes these two hormones, epinephrine and norepinephrine. The tumor secretes them in an episodic way. Remember that. That's a really key point. It can help you differentiate between things that are very similar, or at least appear very similar, this episodic. So sometimes it'll secrete epinephrine and norepinephrine very very high and then at other times it's normal so that results in these spikes in high blood pressure because you remember these two hormones directly act to vasoconstrict the blood vessels vasoconstrict so when this tumor secretes these hormones epinephrine and norepinephrine the blood pressure will spike all the way up really high 220 over 110 and then all of a sudden it goes back down, blood pressure is normal again. So that episodic nature is a key to the clinical vignettes that they present on licensing exams. Finally, we have stenosis of the renal artery. Now, for this, I need to draw a diagram. And uh, this is basically a very basic diagram illustrating this. 
Um, well, first, this is the normal part, uh, uh, presentation. This is the aorta, and these are the renal arteries here, renal arteries. And these renal arteries go to the kidneys, which is what these bean-shaped things are. Now, this is normal. Blood comes down here, goes there, supplies the kidney. Now, there's two ways a renal artery can be narrowed or blocked or stenotic. And I'll talk about both. The first way is when you have plaques. These plaques can all of a sudden narrow um, the arteries. Well, what are plaques? Plaques are just you know fatty substances. You know, people with high cholesterol have those. The other way a renal artery can become stenotic is something called fibro muscular dysplasia. That basically means that the there is abnormal growth of the cells in the walls of the arteries. Okay, so that causes narrowing of the renal arteries. Now both both uh, plaques and fibromuscular dysplasia can cause stenosis of the renal artery. Well, what happens? What, why is this causing high blood pressure? Well, when the arteries that carry blood to the kidneys become narrow like this, less blood flows to the kidney. Less blood actually goes to the kidney. The kidney then responds as if the blood pressure is low. Kidney thinks, well, less blood is coming, so the blood pressure must be low. We need to increase the blood pressure. So the kidney responds by reabsorbing more salt and water back into the blood vessels. It's a compensatory mechanism, and that in turn increases blood pressure. All right, so now, without further ado, let's go into the clinical vignettes. And... Let's talk about each and try to figure out which one of the previously discussed uh, causes of secondary hypertension each one is talking about. 54-year-old man presents for the evaluation of an incidentally discovered adrenal nodule. He underwent a CT scan of the abdomen for evaluation of abdominal pain, which was negative except for a 2-centimeter well-circumscribed low-density nodule in the right adrenal gland. He reports weight gain over fi of 15 kg over the past four years. He has difficult to control type 2 diabetes and hypertension. He has had two episodes of renal colic in the last five years. This is talking about an adrenal nodule. Okay, You've got weight gain. You've got diabetes and hypertension. Okay, Well, to be honest with you, I, you probably need to know a little bit more about Cushing's disease to get this one because this is describing Cushing's. The key to Cushing's really is that the cortisol is really high. And cortisol, well we talked about how it increases blood pressure and of course we know that cortisol comes from the adrenal gland but cortisol also increases sugar in the bloodstream because it's involved in gluconeogenesis and people with Cushing's disease can gain weight. So, you know, probably need to know a little bit more about Cushing's but that's the presentation. Let's go, next one. Four-year-old boy presents to the pediatrician for a Welsh child visit and mother reports him to be doing well and has no concerns. On exam, he is noted to have a right upper extremity blood pressure of 140 over 70. His cardiovascular exam shows a quiet precordium and a normal point of maximal impact, normal S1 and normally split S2. A two out of six long systolic murmur is heard over his back and a two plus radial pulses and trace femoral pulses are felt. All right. Well, this is a four-year-old boy, okay? And he's got a blood pressure of 140 over 70. Is that high or low or normal? The children have uh, blood pressures that are lower than adults. For a four-year-old, I'd probably say a normal blood pressure is about 90 over 50. So 140 over 70 is high. And it's in his right upper extremity. So if you remember that diagram, it's coarctation of the aorta. Yeah. This is a good question. I like this one. Let's keep going here. I got two more. Next one. 33 year old female presents to her doctor complaining of several month history of episodic palpitations and diaphoresis. Episodic. She states that her husband noticed that she becomes pale during these episodes. She has been experiencing progressive episodic headaches, which are not relieved by acetaminophen. In the past, she has been told that she had high calcium level. 
She has a history of kidney stones. Physical exam reveals a blood pressure of 220 over 120 and hypertensive retinal changes. This question probably, or this vignette, probably should offer a little more information, but that's not always the case on licensing exams. You have to do the best you can. But the word that really jumps out on me is episodic. That's why I circled it twice. And that really has to do with pheochromocytoma. You remember, pheochromocytoma is a tumor of the adrenal medulla that secretes epinephrine and norepinephrine in this episodic fashion. So you have these spikes in high blood pressure every time the hormones of the adrenal medulla uh, rise. And that's why she's having this super high blood pressure. And then finally, the last vignette. Here we go. 32-year-old woman with no prior medical history is seen for worsening headache and found to have a blood pressure of 180 over 110. Her blood pressure responds inadequately to thiazide diuretics and calcium channel blockers. An MRA of the renal arteries reveals a beaded appearance ind indicative of fibromuscular dysplasia. Well, well, if you remember, fibromuscular dysplasia is one of the reasons that you can have stenosis of the renal artery, which leads to hypertension. So this is renal artery stenosis. Okay, well, that's the presentation on secondary hypertension.